Hey everyone, uh, just following on from this tweet, I'm going to be doing some work on the Drupal Camp Bristol website and I thought we could change to do another video. It's been a while since I did a video. Um, this is the website I'm going to be working on. Uh, this is uh, the website for our Drupal Camp. It's happening in Bristol next month. And we're in the process of uh, some speakers. Right now. So this website is built with this generator, subject side generator called Sculpin. Um, it's written in PHP. Uh, it used to be a Drupal website previously. And this is really built in Sculpin. And it uses PHP and Twig. So it's very familiar for people who uh, do Drupal. So the feature I'm going to be working on now is the schedule section and this little proof of concept section I've built up and I'm going to refactor it and make it more dynamic. And currently these are all hard coded and what I like to do is have them pull the uh, names from the session content up that's available on the website. And Switch to PHP Storm. Um, just beginning with the index.html file that is the home page. Uh, we have access to speakers, uh, the speakers content type because we needed to display the uh, speakers list um, right here. Uh, currently, the schedule uh, is this partial, so it includes this partial. Uh, we get slots from the Sculpin settings file, uh, which is this. So the schedule slots are just an array of slots with a time and a label. And those all get passed through as the slots variable. Then the schedule uh, essentially is a loop over every slot. Uh, we using Tailwind CSS. I'm using Tailwind for most of the front end, and it's then just looping over these slots, generating a list item, and it's some classes if it's not the last one. And currently, you're just outputting the label and the time for that slot. So, this is fine, but um, if those names change or something, uh, it'd be nice to have them be more dynamic. And what I think I'd like to do is be able to add an ID to each of the slots in here, uh, link a session up to a slot, and then um, have those get pulled through automatically. So this is um, one of the sessions right now. Uh, so it has obviously a title and then the name of the speakers, uh, which is a bit of an abstract. So this is where this I'd like to pull the name from. And obviously, this is one to pull the session title from. Um, so you can do this quickly. Um, one way of doing it is just be within this loop. So let's start by adding uh, IDs to the slots. So if we go into the Sculpted site file, uh, let's just use multiple cursors, select all the times, add an ID to each one. Just bring up the extra list. And then there's a plugin for PHP Storm where I can select duplicate, increment duplicates. That's going to update our ID values for every, every slot. So each slot now has its own ID starting at 1 and all the way down to uh, 17. And if you go back into the schedule uh, where we're looping through each slot, we can just output the slot ID now. So, um, within this terminal, Sculpin is, is running and watching and, and compiling. And then in this one, browser sync is watching for changes as well. So if you press Chrome, uh, we'll now see that the IDs are being output in each slot. So what I'm wanting to do is, let's say, go into a session, type that with a particular slot ID. And have that then be displayed in that particular section. So we could do it one way, uh, just using a loop. So let's see how that would work. So rather than having an ID, we could say 
and we're going to use another for loop. Uh, session in sessions. So we loop up each of the sessions. Uh, and we can use if keyword within our loop. So if the session slots is equal to the slot ID. And this is fine, we just have to loop over everything, every session and every slot, which is not great. Um, but also notice that it's actually an error as well, um, because the loop, ver loop last variable is not available when we're using a condition like this. Uh, so we already have to start updating our code um, to make it work this way. So we could do this by creating the key and then checking the, if the key is same as the length of the loop. This would work. If we go back to our site here, uh, we get nothing to begin with, but we need to pass through the uh, sessions in the index file. And the way the skeleton works is when you bring something uh, from the content type, it would get prefixed with data. So we can go and add it in here. Sessions. So that brings our sessions content type into scope for this, this page. So you can see that this is what's currently in that slot. And if we go back to our schedule, uh, now we're obviously in the slot label, we can use session. Screw guides, we get the actual talk type. Uh, let's just try it with another one. We will start with Drupal and let's put this in slot 9. And there we go. So, um, this is fine. Uh, I built a lot of the original pages this way, um, but so I've recently been refactoring to use custom bundles and tweak extensions. Um, just to keep the loop of the templates cleaner, get rid of uh, that second loop. Because it's having to go over every session in every slot, which is not ideal. Um, what I really like it to do, what I'd like to be able to do is if we do something like set session uh, equals uh, session in the slot, something like that, pass through the ID. In all the sessions, and then we wouldn't need this loop at all. Uh, that would be the ideal case. But as soon as we do that, we get an error that there's no session in slot function. This just doesn't exist. Um, I am using something similar in these uh, speaker sessions. So, speaker, an actual speaker page. So here we've got a sessions for speaker, so I think it's just a bit more verbose, easy to read. And we don't get that nasty looping code. So um, how do we want to do that? So the original one, or the other, the, the session name comes from the, uh, the speakers bundle. And you can see it's got some source files. There are some tests for speakers already um, and series as well. So once you go in here and just run these tests just to make sure they still pass. Okay, so we see two tests and they both pass. So I like keeping these bundles quite modular. This is quite how I would build Drupal modules. Um, so I'm going to make another bundle called uh, schedule. So I'm going to start just by copying uh, the speakers. So do the main lesson that says schedule extension. These are very sometimes symphony bundles. Uh, yeah, we 
this one. And then likewise I'll update the stems base. So the extension is defined as a service and um, in the service as well. So I have to update this here as well. Also, I think of one more. That's our basic um, bundle structure in place. Uh, so let's also read out these tests. I'm going to try and do is try this out using test driven development, make sure this is all working in the way we need to, and then hook it up into Sculpin and add it to our twig uh, layer. So let's start by removing this, these tests. You can see the top of the, these tests, we are um, creating a new extension. Let's just start by importing that extension. So this should be this so yeah, I'll create no test in this form, which is what we just like. So Let's just start by as a new test. So I like to use the um, annotation, the uh, test annotation. So you could write so test and um, schedule that way. Um, I create two snake cakes for test names. <clears throat> so we can say get a session or a thought. And the way I do this, I like to do this almost backwards. So I'll get you start by writing the assertions first. In this case, we're going to look at the session name. So let's just, just test driven Drupal, which is one of mine. Okay, so the, the session title is equal to test driven Drupal. And the session. It's going to come from the extension. Call cool method like get session in slot, which doesn't exist yet. And we can specify a slot ID, so that would be three. And we also pass the class sessions. And let's just make some sessions. In the session in this case is going to get array. Uh, we'll state of Drupal. And we're going to give it a slot. It's about four. Let's do the bits at the time. There's some sort of random order on here. <clears throat> Just we don't have any false positives. Using this for automation. These names don't matter. I like them to be fairly uh, representative of what it is for actually testing. And 
see what it is. So it has some attachments. Uh, we have a slot to retrieve, and uh, we can start measuring this test. So to speak with our scheduled extension is not found, and um, that's because we haven't auto-loaded it yet. So load off. I'm specifying the app speakers down space is located within this directory. So I can do the same thing again. Uh, schedule. Uh, make sure we the auto loader. Hopefully, we can rerun that and get a different out. Okay, so we've now got an undefined method to get the session to the slot. We expected that, so we found that doesn't exist. So I'll add that method. And this is going to return these for now on the array. So let's rerun this test again. This time, as we've not returned an array, so let's just stop out and then we'll rerun that test. I will just for now rerun that test. Now that our fake title doesn't match what we're expecting, so what we can do is actually make this do something. So we need to take our array of sessions and return back the one that matches our slot ID. So let's change this to slot ID. And the way we do this, I'm using um, Laravel Illuminate Connections. So I can collect the sessions that are passing through. And what we can actually do here is Use a filter. This takes a callback the session. This is a boolean. So anything that returns false will get filtered out. Anything that returns true will be kept. And it's still going to return where my session slot. Is equal to the slot ID. Do we to use the slot ID to bring up the scope? So this will turn back an array. Let's make the size return back just one. Let me make sure that one is. And so, of course, our expected title is instruction to be used. If we run this to our test passes, so we're able to get the right session for that slot. Uh, in fact, we can refactor this a little bit and first we can take a callback of its own. So, I believe that this also becomes first way. So, I believe this should still pass. And it does. That's cool. Let's take the option that's formatting. So I think this is fine. Um, I'm not overly keen of using um, an array for this. So what I think I'm going to do actually is make a session class. And we can return that and then call methods on that. Uh, so what I'm going to want to do, I think, is assert that rather than an array, we may give back a session class. Which obviously doesn't exist yet either. We let the tests tell us that. 
and then we want to call it type where we put it to call it. Let's go type on the method. So once again, it's now fail, um, because uh, this session, the session class doesn't exist. Uh, so what I'm going to do uh, is make a new session not on model directory. Yeah, so now it's saying that um, it's passing this assertion, um, but now yeah, so now it's saying that our session uh, will return back an array that we should be uh, uh, a session. So if we look back into slots, um, before we return back the first one, let's do it. Map and session, and this is going to turn back a session, uh, session object. That's one, isn't it? What we then say is return back a new session, passing through our session object. So it's being underlined because we haven't specified the constructor to accept these arguments. We'll go back to test, test that in a moment. Uh, so in this case, we need to um, change this so we can say get slot. And that also doesn't exist yet. Also, just type in session. Return. And uh, get slot method. We can get slot is going to return the slot ID. And uh, we're going to store the passed in data as data and then return that the value of slot. And again, we don't have any data yet. Uh, we're going to pass it through the constructor. But again, we set the test to tell us that we don't have that. Um, so we don't, don't have data. So let's add some data. And then within our constructor, uh, we can accept the data and store it on uh, the property. And then the final thing to do, the my braces. It's the uh, get session slot that allows us to return a local array and to return back a session. And finally, get title. We need to add a method for get title. This will be very similar to the previous one. Turn back the string to this data. Also, this initial this returns back an integer. So now we've got that running, let's hook it up to Twig. So let's just start by going into our schedule. And let's we got our session in slot uh, function. Let's 
so it's still going to fail because this doesn't yet exist. So we're going to add session in slot as a function uh, the last schedule, the last schedule extension. Uh, so we already have uh, the previous functions at the top here, so get functions. And we can add our the trig function session slot. And this is going to call method in this class called get session in slot. These old functions. This is the other. This also means that in our um, services file, our schedule extension is registered in here as a twig extension. And this is loaded from the scoping schedule. So hopefully now if we go back and restart this. So now it's trying to run, but it doesn't know about our scoping schedule bundle yet. So what we need to do is go into our uh, scoping kernel file. And this is where else. Schedule button is in this condition. So exit. There we go. And the session and slot function. Extension. Session and slot. Also update this database. Return value of session is that needs to be a session or return. Okay, so that's because we don't have a session for every slot yet. So let's make that um, optional. Okay, session and slot. Let's go for that optional session. Just for now, too. Session. Okay, yeah, we'll do that for a bit. Okay, we're rolling. So hopefully. So what's happening now is it's going through every slot, trying to find the uh, session. If it exists, if it doesn't, it's going to return like nothing. Let's give us some empty values.
sag ich mal. Das war nichts. It's only out of that if we can find a session. So we need this session to add of that list item. Okay, now when you get R2, we've got the sessions for. Let's just update everything. So I mean, what we do next is also pull through the name of the speaker, or the speakers. Uh, what we like to do instead of that is to do um, session of speakers. And then if there are multiple of them, we can pass them through the join filter and comma separate them. This is something we can add onto our uh, speak on job session and um, session class. Come away. This is probably not going to load. So currently there are no this because it doesn't exist yet. So what we can do is go back and to our session. And let's add another method for so get speakers. And let's have that to have like a collection of speakers. What is the get speakers? Let's just that into that collection method. Make sure it doesn't block collection. The way trait works, it's going to look, uh, if we just call speakers, it's going to look for a method called get speakers or speakers. So, let's just speak in this. Okay, so there's our names of speakers. So, if potentially um there's sort of Drupal it's so it's gonna be transmit by somewhere else and then once that compiles uh this name is going to change to somewhere else let's say for some reason um well, let's say that if another speaker was to come in like John Dan um we're never gonna put them both and can't separate them Tidy up some of our markup. Okay, so keep this the same. We'll see our wrapping span. Let's just wrap each of these. The span. So I'm using Tailwind because this um, markup with the CSS which came from Drupal um, helped use the TW extension not to clash with Drupal's regular sort of lock uh, elements. So in this case we have a TW block to call Tailwind's block. Uh, so we're putting the name now. Potential, let's just add a little bit of margin to the top. Uh, to space things out. Uh, cool, so let's take the back out from there. So the last thing about this as well is that, say, we're going to move this into slot one. Uh, it's going to then re order these and update the time automatically. I think the next thing 
um, to do is re-add all of our other sessions, all of our slots. Um, because at the moment they're all empty. So back into our site file. So that you've got these these slots that have not sessions in them, but um, close remarks and then treats reception. So we set up those three there. Um, let's stop the ticket all our TVCs to be eight. We don't need those anymore. So Matt's name will be pulled from this session. So we've only got sort of the non-session labels in there. And I think what we can do now is pass that as a default value. So to go into the schedule, we will move that history again. Let's make sure that I'll be able to play this though. And have a look at the session title. We don't have a session title. And this default to be slot. We get our slot labels. And you still see our TBs and TBCs. Uh, we probably just need it's got to cache those savings files by default. So let's just maybe go on that. So these defaults are coming through, but these ones are still empty. This is our TBC, TBA, to be announced. So now we've got our dynamically updated uh, schedule. 